April 8th and April 9th lecture on sections 4.3 to 4.5, differentiating exponential and logarithmic functions. This lecture will consist of three sections. The first one is exponential functions in the chain rule that explains how to differentiate x e to a function, which we left off on last lecture. The next is the natural logarithm. We'll define the natural logarithm, and then we'll explain the third section, how to differentiate the natural logarithm. Last lecture, we left off with the following rule. If the function is e to the x, its derivative is e to the x. The outside function is e to the x. The inside function is g of x. Well, here, oh, okay, this is a mistake. This should have said the inside function is g of x, an arbitrary function. When you apply the chain rule, you get f prime of evaluated g of x is e to the g of x, and h prime of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x, which is e to the g of x times g prime of x. You can remember that by saying the derivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff times the derivative of that stuff. Here's an example, differentiating an exponential function. For a con any constant, first example, any constant, let our function be e to the kx. The outside function here, again, of course, is e to the x. The inside function, though, meaning what is in the exponent, is g of x, which is kx. Its derivative is k. And when we differentiate so when we differentiate the composite function, we get e to the kx times k. That's equivalent to e raised to the g of x times g prime. It's usually conventional to write a function in front of e to a power. Here's an example. Now this works for any constant, any real constant. If k is negative 1, the, the function, the composite function, is e to the minus x, and its derivative is minus e to the negative x. There's another example. e to the square root of x squared plus 3. Again, the outside function is e to the x, and the inside function is square root of x squared plus 3. Square root of x squared plus 3 is the same as x squared plus 3 to the 1 half power. The derivative of x squared plus 3 raised to the 1 half power is 1 half x squared plus 3 raised to the negative 1 half times 2 times 2x. The derivative of x squared plus 3, of course, is 2x because the derivative of x squared is 2x. That is from the power rule. And the derivative of 3 is 0 because the derivative of any constant is 0. When we rewrite that using radicals, it's equivalent to x over square root of x squared. That was a mistake. This should be x squared plus 3. And we can conclude the derivative of e to the square root of x squared plus 3 is x over square root of x squared plus 3 times e to the square root of x squared plus 3. The natural logarithm, this slide we're going to describe the natural logarithm. The natural logarithm is the inverse of the function e to the x and is called the natural logarithm. Natural just means it has base a. This means if we take ln of e to the x, we get back x. So ln will take e to a power and output that power. Further, e to the ln of x will, so if we take e to ln of an input, we'll return the input. The domain of the function ln of x is all positive numbers, and the range is minus infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. It's equivalent to the, the domain and range of function e to the x, but those domains and ranges are switched. Here's the graph of e to the x and y is equal to ln of x. The red curve, the red curve is the function e to the x. The blue curve, blue line is the y equal to x, and the green curve 
is the function y is equal to ln of x. If you notice, this is true for any inverse function. The function ln of x is obtained. The graph of the function y is equal to ln of x is obtained from the graph of the function y is equal to e of x by reflecting the curve y equal to e of x across the line y is equal to x. That just means we're switching x and y. We're switching inputs and outputs. That is what you're doing when you take the inverse of a function. You're switching inputs and outputs. And as you recall, domain is the set of inputs, range is the set of outputs, so switching inputs and outputs results in a switched domain and range. The natural logarithm can be used to solve equations. To solve ln of x is equal to a constant, put both sides in the exponent of e. e to the ln of x will return x, and we'll get e to the c. And that can work actually for any constant c, because if you recall, the domain of e to the the domain of e to the x is all real numbers, and that's equivalent to the range of ln of x. If we solve e to the x equal to c on the other hand, now this is only going to work if c is a positive number. We take the natural logarithm of both sides, ln of both sides, ln of e to the x will return the exponent x, and we will result with ln of c. And of course, that's only going to be defined if c is positive. Here are two examples. Solve 5 times ln of x is 21. To solve that, we divide both sides by 5 to get ln of x is 21 over 5. Put both sides in the exponent of e to get e to the ln of x, which is x, is equal to e to the 21 over 5, and conclude that x is e to the 21 fifths. Solve e to the 7x is equal to 5. We take ln of both sides to get e ln of e to the 7x, which is 7x, which is ln of 5. Divide both sides by 7 to get x is ln of 5 over 7. So those are two examples of how we used natural logarithms and exponentials to solve equations. Now we turn to the third section. This is the derivative of the natural logarithm. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. If g of x is an arbitrary function, we form the composite function f of g of x ln of g of x. So instead of taking x as an input, ln is taking g of x as an input. We apply the chain rule to get the following. f prime of g of x is 1 over g of x, and the derivative of ln of g of x is g prime of x over g of x. 1 over g of x, the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inside function alone, times the derivative of the inside function. The outside function here is 1 over x, I'm sorry, is the outside function here is ln of x, its derivative is 1 over x, so we'll evaluate the derivative 1 over x at the inside function, g of x, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, g prime of x. Now we get to the example of differentiating functions, including the natural logarithm. Let's differentiate the function ln of e to the minus 3x plus x squared. Here, the inside function is e to the minus 3x plus x squared. Its derivative is minus 3 e to the minus 3x plus 2x. h prime of x is g prime of x over g of x. So we just put the derivative in the numerator and the original function in the denominator. Minus 3 e to the minus 3x plus 2x all over e to the minus 3x plus x squared. Another example. Our function p of x is ln of x cubed plus x squared over x cubed plus x squared. Here the inside function is x cubed plus x squared. Its derivative is 3x squared plus 2x. So the derivative of this function, this numerator function, is 3x squared plus 2x over x cubed plus x squared. That's always the case. The derivative of ln of a function is the derivative of that function over the function itself. Now we apply the quotient rule. So we different to p of x. This, I'm sorry, this should have been p prime of x, not h prime of x. The derivative of p of x is equal to 3x squared plus 2x over x cubed plus x squared. That's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator x cubed plus x squared minus 
the deriv derivative of the denominator, which is 3x squared plus 2x, times the numerator, which is ln of x cubed plus x squared, all divided by the denominator squared, x cubed plus x squared squared. Now, that simplifies. If you notice, the, fir the first two factors, the first factor is 3x squared plus 2x over x cubed plus x squared. The denominator is the same as the second factor, x cubed plus x squared. We can cancel those out. We're equivalently write x squared, sorry, x cubed plus x squared as x cubed plus x squared divided by 1. And then this factor here will cancel out, the factor in the numerator will cancel out with the factor in the denominator in the, in the first factor, and we're left with the factor in the numerator in the first factor, which is 3x squared plus 2x. And of course, we're subtracting the same two factors, 3x squared plus 2x times ln of x cubed plus x squared. And the quotient rule says to divide by the denominator squared, so we divide by x cubed plus x squared squared. All right, that's it for this lecture. Next time we'll talk about laws of logarithms as well as logarithmic differentiation. And if we have time, get into some topics about integration.